stiff arm for Rawls. Down the sideline goes Thomas Rawls. Pop Warner uh, years and my auntie came over here and she came she came here and she needed some bigger boys to play football and um, she took me to practice I didn't have any police I was out there my first day with some shoes and came back home after that day of practice and uh, asked my daddy man we needed some cleats so he got me some football cleats the next day I came to practice and we had on pads and um, that's when I first started you know, playing defense and learning the, the physical part of the game. And ever since then, you know, i just been liking, you know, the, the contact. I love. I just, I just started feeling the love for the game. It was fun to me. And um, I, think it, I think it started really becoming a dream somewhere down the line as far as uh, my middle school years. Uh, I got bigger, got faster, got stronger, uh, built bonds with, with guys, so it made me even love the game even more. So... I want to say my hardest obstacle um, throughout my whole journey was um, after I graduated from Northern, I earned a scholarship to the University of Michigan where I graduated in three years, my junior year. Um, that, that process of transferring to Central Michigan where I had to overload on credits. I had to take 32 credits at one, at one time. and um, It was tough, um, especially it was at a low time in my life where, um, <coughs> where a lot of people Cut, cut ties with me, cut connections uh, from me, uh, because I wasn't getting on the field as much as I was probably my first early couple, uh, couple of years and things of that nature. And um, through that, throughout that whole process, um, I remember what I did, and I cut off the TV. I put it, I took the TV out of my room, quit playing games. I stopped communicating with a lot of people. I had to really just find myself. I was at like a dark moment in my life, and. Um, and, and at that time, I had to ask myself, was I'm a, uh, are, am I going to fold or am I going to rise up to the occasion? And, um, I took 32 credits, um, still had to um, work out. Um, I asked the head coach, you know, could I work out in their facilities and stuff like that? They denied me. So uh, I had to do what I did like I was back growing up back at home in Flint. And that was going outside with my cleats, getting the water jug, running out there on my own, lifting with water jugs, doing whatever I got to do. I couldn't use nothing there. So... Um, I had to grind as much as I could, and, um, not just that, but just also taking those 32 credits, which was hard. And, um, and I did it. I graduated uh, May May 3rd of 2014, and that's when I began my my journey as far as my last season and um, up to this point uh, leading up to the NFL. You know, the youth and growing up in Flint, Michigan, because I can tell you, man, growing up here, it was tough. Um, I mean, when I tell you. I'm in the heart. I'm in the heart of it. You know, I'm on the north side of Flint, and um, it, it, it was tough. But um, one thing about it is, you just gotta separate yourself from 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 the, from, from your surroundings as far as the ones who's, who who's really not on the same level as you. You know, so I had a couple guys. I had a couple guys. You know, uh, with me. You know, to grind with. And make, we, we may not have had 10 to 20 guys in the weight room or 10 to 20 guys working out, but uh, it was a few of us who uh, who, who who called who called up each other and. You know, try to keep that bond and keep that that that, that dream alive, and, uh, and those guys helped me also. I, I didn't just do this on my own. I had people in the process to help me with this. And um, just a word of advice from the, uh, for the youth is that that it's possible. I mean, I'm no different just because I'm going to the next level. I'm no different than uh, a kid that you see on the daily walking around these streets. It was just I just chose the fact to you know continue to pursue something and and and, and do extra to to get to where I'm at now. So if that's extra running, uh, extra lifting, uh, not not going out as much, you know, not partying, staying away from the streets, and um, and really just 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 taking advantage of every opportunity that I uh, that I've uh, have ever gotten. So man, I mean, it's possible. I just I feel like coming from Flint, Michigan, um, it's either you rise to the occasion or you gonna fold. And um, and I'm not a guy who who would ever fold. And, um, and I think this city made, made me tough. I think it, um, it gave me a, a type of fight in me. Uh, and, it, and it's also, you know, it, it gave me a lot of pride to say down for Flint, Michigan, where it's rare to come out of. And, um, and, and the positive things 
that do happen around the city, you know, we probably don't hear them as much because we got other things that that's uh, in the media mouth as far as just a little things of di di uh, distractions and stuff like that. So, um, word word advice from the youth is that it's possible, man. And only thing I do is listen, listen to your mother, listen to your father, and you know, try to find a, another role model instead of the ones you see on the daily that's just out here in these streets and that's doing something positive. That's why when I come back to the city, um, I go talk to kids, go work out kids, go uh, help help people work out kids because growing up, uh, I didn't have those people to, that was at the college level or even at the NFL level, uh, level to come back and, you know, talk to me or teach me this or, or put this in my ear. It's kind of different, you know, hearing something from one person who's really not in that position or really not knowing than a person who really is. So uh, you interpret it different and analyze it different. So that's why I come back to the, uh, the, the city and talk to the youth. Well, that whole weekend, uh, I'm, I remember it was the, it was the third day, uh, the fourth through seven rounds, and I was and I was supposed to get picked throughout the fourth and seventh round, but um, something in the back of my mind said that they were gonna hold a lot of stuff against me because the thing with the NFL is they want you as cheap as they can, so um, that 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 whole feeling I, I had I had mixed emotions. Uh, you you saw me happy at times, you saw me a little bit sad, I had, had tears. It, I had a lot of mixed emotions, but um, when the seventh round came, uh, I was hoping that I didn't get drafted. So I can sign as a free agent, so I can pick a team and pick what type of situation that I want to get in, you know. So um, uh, that 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 whole emotion when I was getting the call, I was getting calls throughout the sixth and seventh round, but nobody was pulling the trigger. Nobody wanted to take a chance on me. So uh, seven round came and um, it was I think it was about four or five picks left, and I mean I was getting calls back to back from probably over twenty teams. I could have probably went anywhere in the NFL, and. Um, it was one team that stuck with me, which was the Seattle Seahawks, because throughout my whole draft process, you know, they, they only had five picks, and they didn't draft a running back. And, um, <clears throat> and they told me if I was still a free agent, which they didn't think I would still be on the board, but if I was still, uh, you know, as, as far as a free agent, that they would be the first team to call me. And um, after, after the seven round got up, a lot of teams started to, you know, calling me, but the teams was passing me up, you know, so they were drafting other running backs, so therefore, if you wanted me that bad, I felt that they should have drafted me, and uh, Seattle didn't draft a running back, and they only had five picks, and uh, and then, not not just that, but also the type of offense they run, uh, and also their veteran guy, which is Marshawn Lynch, you know, I figure I can learn a lot from him and go down there and compete against, and, um, and looking at that running back position, and also trying to make that team, and uh, try to get on the practice team and 53-man roster and things of that nature. So uh, I weigh my options uh, rationally, and, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting down there and tearing it up. I want to give a special, you know, thank you to you, uh, Delano Whitby, for, uh, before we end this interview because you also helped me as far as um, football, uh, friendship, our, our bond. You know, you being a husband and a father and graduating, and you come from here also, so I wish I could be interviewing you, but um, I thank you for everything. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan, once again. Running away with it, literally. Fifth career rushing touchdown for Thomas Rawls.